without you So stress, no relief I can't even sleep Can't pay my bills, my baby's hungry My job concerns me My man, he needs me My girls want me to hang out and party Master, 
Allow that we might be filled up with your spirit all today. Yes. Lord, bless each individual that has made their way out to the household of prayer. Oh God, move in their lives in such a way that the world will know that they serve yes. a crucified yes. and a risen Savior. Yes. But we pray that our worship today yes. will be such that you get the glory out of our lives. Yes. We're so thankful, Lord, for all you have done and all you have given to us down through the week. Thank you for granting us another day to come out here. Thank you for our families. Thank you for just being the wonderful God that you are. We ask the Lord that you continue to be on today. That you will let your word move in our hearts in such a way. We will come to grow closer to you. We humbly ask these blessings and lift you up in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And all God's children say amen. 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 I want to share with you for our scripture for today from the uh, book of Daniel. We're going to stay in Daniel today, uh, chapter 3. And we're going to be looking at familiar, familiar territory. That's Daniel 3, verses uh, 21 through 25. Daniel 3, 21 through 25. And here's what the text says. Daniel 3, 21 through 25. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats. And they were, and, their, and of their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. All right, then. You can go ahead and grab your seat if you like, but you can stand up and clap your hand if you like. Amen. Amen. Choir, come on, give us another hot message. Thanks, Father. Yeah, thanks, Father.
We want to take a moment to acknowledge any first-time guests that might be visiting with us all today. If you're all with us for the first time, would you mind standing and remain standing until we've had an opportunity to say good morning to you? Do you have any first-time guests with us all today? All right. I don't see any anyone standing other than the ushers and the deacons. So that must mean everybody here has been with us before, which is a good thing. Yeah. That means that we don't have to put on any eggs. Uh, that means I can talk about you if I want to talk about you. And if you do get mad, it won't be the first time you got mad. Amen. All right. Because uh, we know that uh, uh, every now and again, uh, a wise man once told me that if you come to church, there are at least three things that are going to happen to you. At least one of the three. Either you want to get happy, you want to get sad, or you want to get mad. And if you don't walk out with one of those feelings, then I haven't done my job. And I, so if you walk out mad, I ain't going to be mad. I'm going to be glad. Because that means I must have said something to hit you right here. All right. All right. Well, uh, uh, the person that does our announcements um, uh, told me that she won't be here today uh, because of a uh, uh, situation. And so she said there, is, there are no new announcements. And everything that I she would tell you, you've already heard before. Uh, and, and since she did not give me the list, then that means that um, I don't have to tell you anyway. So we're going to keep right on rolling then. All right. But uh, I do want you, as we as we go to our prayer time, uh, Sister Hendricks has asked for prayer for her and as well as her siblings. Uh, one of her family members has been uh, diagnosed with COVID-19, and unfortunately, you know, she had been in, con been in close contact with the person, and so they're asking uh, for prayer. Uh, and um, uh, let me say this right quick, because I just noticed something about my choir. I love y'all. I'm talking bad, you know, right? But if you say more well, visitors, I can say what I want to say. I know that you all have uh, let the rule go about wearing your mask, wearing your, your thing when you sing it. Now, uh, let me say this. Sister Hendricks said that, she, that, her, that a person in her family that had COVID-19 had no idea she had COVID-19. Yeah, that's right. Because she was doing well. That's right. And oftentimes we feel like we're doing well, so that's we right. say, you know what, let me skip the rule. But when you skip the rule, somebody else is in danger. Amen. Right. And, and you just don't know who you're putting in danger. Right. And so I'm going to ask y'all, I know you probably don't have it with you now, but I'm going to ask y'all, don't skip the rule. Because I don't want you to put me in danger. <laughs> you know. And you can put seven days out of the but don't put me in danger. Because I, I don't want I, I don't mind going to heaven, preacher. Let me tell you something right now. I don't mind going, but I don't want to be in the next month. Please give me one more question. All right. <laughs> Uh, so, so, but anyway, y'all pray for her, pray for, pray for that family because um, apparently during the Thanksgiving holidays, a lot of them were together, and, and so you know um, they, they, that raises some concern. Uh, also, uh, one of our, um, uh, I get also a member of one of the entities that used to be a member of our church that moved to Florida uh, was in contact with um, uh, Brother Todd. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all may remember uh, Brother Todd and his wife uh, uh, Denise. Well, their daughter, uh, they had two, had some twins, and the daughter uh, passed away suddenly. She's 20 years old. Uh, they just found her dead. They don't know what happened. They don't know what the circumstances were. And so I uh, have been talking with the family, and uh, I will say the Lord has really touched them and kept them during this difficult time. Uh, but they don't know what the circumstances were because, they, you know, they have to complete the autopsy and those kind of things. Uh, but I want you all to keep uh, the Todd family uh, in, in your prayers as well. And also with the Randall family, I think I mentioned to you, uh, whose son was, um, who was shot last week. That film is going to be this Tuesday. So I want you to keep the Randall family in your prayer, uh, prayers as well. God is good. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. He is good all the time. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Let us pray. Eternal God, the God of the heavens and the earth, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. 
that you have bestowed upon this congregation, Lord God, yes. and all over the world. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the touch of your anointing. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We give you thanks for giving us another day, Lord God. For this is the day that you have made. Yes. We have come to rejoice and we are glad to be in it. Yes. And to worship and praise your holy name. Yes. And we are gathered, Lord God, on this Sunday, the last Sunday in November. Yes. Father, we thank you as we come to present our bodies unto you. Yes. We want you to know, God, how thankful we are for the things that you have done for us. Yes. To you, O oh God, only the glory do unto you. We give you thanks, O oh God, with a grateful heart. Lord God Almighty, we oh, thank you, Jesus. And this is lecture coronavirus. Continue to spike, Lord God. My God, my God, my God. And the hospital of nationwide from the Father have pressed to his limb. We come today, Lord, lifting our eyes into the hills from which come our help. Yes. Father, we look for a special prayer, Lord God. Right for our dear sisters of the Henrys and her family, yes. Lord God. For Lord, we serve notice against the enemy, O oh God. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, we believe when these things come upon us, O oh God. And when your healing come forth, yes. it is the manifestation of your glory. Yes. So touch the Britain, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And when the family be tested, O oh God, we decree the negative. Yes. Report Hallelujah. for that family, O oh God. God. Father, we ask for your help. Yes. Oh God. As we address this COVID-19, oh God, yes. God, God, as Pastor say, oh God, that we look out for one another yes. and yes. practice those safety practices, oh God, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh God, during the past week, we celebrate the National Day of Thanksgiving. Yes. And Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us, even during this pandemic, yes. to be with families, yes. our closest friends, yes. Even our neighbors, oh God. Together, all of us give you thanks again. In our supplication unto you today, Lord God, also, we ask you to look upon the elderly, oh God. Look upon the young, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we ask you to let us keep this fellowship among us as we worship you, Lord, in spirit and truth. Hallelujah, Lord God. For your words say, let the young and the old rejoice together. And in this house, oh God, we decree it, oh God, that your joy will bring strength unto us. Father, we ask you to bless and sustain us and help us through our illness in the name of Jesus. Father, look upon those who are struggling with major challenges to their lives, in their lives. Lord, I ask you to touch those such as in bereavement. Look upon the territory and his family, oh God. Oh God, it is a pain to lose a child, Lord yes. God. It has been custom said the children bury the parents. Yes. But in this case, God, we know that you have a reason, you have a purpose, oh God. Yes. Also, Lord, look upon the Stalin family. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Look upon so Darlene, oh God, in the name of Jesus, also God, God, God. Oh God, we know you're able. Yes. For your word says, O oh God, bless us they that mourn, for they shall be comfortable. Yes. Yes. And we thank you for yes. it, Lord God. Yes. Yes. And the only thing we have during this time to depend on God is your word. Yes. Your word so let your word flow upon us, O God, and we walk by faith yes. and not by sight. Yes. You say, Lord God, before one God, one till your worship fail. Yes. You say, heaven and earth will pass away. Yes. And we believe you, Lord God. Yes that you will provide strength that we need. Father God, as we come into this worship center to hear a word from you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for making your word known to us. Father, we ask you to continue to bless Pastor Daniel. Oh God, every word that he preaches, oh God, line upon line, piece upon piece, yes. We know you give us a great impartation that you teach unto us, oh God. Words can't come out. They, oh God, is our heart burned within us as he preached by the way. 
So, Father, we ask you on this day to give us clarity and understanding yes. of your word. Yes. And we hear what the Spirit says to the church. Yes. May all of this be done. Yes. That you be yes. glorified yes. and honored. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Prove it to our heart that you do all things well. Yes. As we praise you today for your mighty acts. Jesus. And according to your excellent greatness. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, if you will, turn with me uh, to Daniel, third chapter, and we're going to be looking at uh, verses 21 through 25, uh, and the choir is going to give us another selection at this time.
Daniel 3, 21 through 25. Daniel 3, 21 through 25. Here's what uh, uh, the uh, historian recorded. Uh, then these men were bound in their coats, uh, their hose and their hats, yes. and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, mm -hmm. and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men, and that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the fourth, the form of the fourth, is like the Son of God. You may be seated. Our Heavenly Father, we call upon your name with a sense of urgency. Knowing, Master, that that which the world cannot do, that, Lord, you can call into existence. That which appears to be impossible with you is the ordinary. So Lord, we ask you today to put a special anointed blessing upon your children, one that will confound their enemies, yes. and one that will demonstrate that you are Lord of Lord and King of King. Yes. We need a healing today, Lord, yes. not just for our bodies, but for our land. Yes. We need, Lord, a touch that will bring us together, yes. a touch that will let us understand yes. that we cry together, yes. we survive together, yes. we laugh together, yes, we progress as one. Yes. We pray God for every saint here today that your touch will yes. give them that which they need on in these times. We pray, Father, for the families that have lost loved ones, that, Lord, you will give them your comfort by your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. As we pray for those that find themselves in economic despair, yes because of the ongoing ordeal that we all face daily. Yes. And Father, for those things, we ask that you will quickly come and deliver your children. Yes. Do so in a way, Father, that will allow each of us to shout with joy and yes. let the world know how wonderful you are. We thank you in advance, Father, because we know that you've already heard our cry. You yes. understand our condition. Let your angels have already been given the charge to see about us as children. We humbly ask these blessings and we lift you up. In Jesus' name, we claim our victory. Amen. Amen. I just thank you so much. You can uh, go ahead and um, take your seats, um, if you will. Um, Daniel 3, 21 through 25. Uh, Daniel 3, 21 through 20, 25. Uh, have you ever asked yourself a question? Uh, where is God? Uh, have you ever wondered uh, why God didn't show up uh, when you wanted him to show up? Uh, why he didn't resolve the problem the way you wanted the problem resolved? I think that most of us are honest with ourselves, that uh, we have to admit that uh, there have been numerable times in our lives when we question why God would allow us to go through, you know, the things that we're going through. Um, and, and what I found myself, you know, I mean, I, I can speculate on you, but I can speak authoritatively on me. Yes, yes. And, and that is that I find that my crying to God is not always just when I'm in the middle of the fire, uh -huh. but even when I see the fire in front of me yeah. and realize I have no choice but to go in. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and 
And so we tend to question God while we're here, even before we really feel the heat. Yeah, yeah. But just when we know the heat is coming. Um, this text, which, which is historically, uh, I would say somewhere around 25 centuries ago, gives us a clear picture of three men that that um, one would think would have been in this bag uh, because of where they were. Uh, not just them, but the thousands of, of, of their countrymen who have been deported from their homes to a foreign country. Mm -hmm. um, they have been ripped away from their families. They have been ripped away from everything they held dear. Um, they have lost loved ones. They have lost treasured possessions. Um, they had lost their homes, their, their crops that they had planted, yeah. uh, their livestock, they lost everything. Yeah. And, and not only had they lost everything, but they found themselves subject to an egotistical king. Right. Uh, and they were surrounded by people who did not understand their God, nor worship their God. Uh, but instead of giving in, or giving up, these three courageous young men held fast to their faith in God. Something inside of them told them that in spite of their circumstances, that God was sovereign, and that God was working out a plan to redeem them, and to show the enemy the kind of God that they serve. The reason why I want to stay in Daniel is because Daniel is a book that helps us to understand the profound sovereignty of the God we serve. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a book that tells us that we won't have trials, tribulations, or trouble. It is a book that says in spite of yes. Yes. what you think you are going through, yes. that God is always there. Oh, yes, and God always has a plan for your life. Yeah. Uh, when you look at this particular chapter, and, 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 and this is, this is uh, comfortable territory, let me say this. It's comfortable because this is not a story that most of you don't already know. Uh, but I want to just help you see some things that I think you may have missed during the process of reading about these particular free Hebrew boys. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, who was um, king in Babylon, uh, had a desire to build a kingdom that would uh, last forever. And, and he, wanted to, to, he wanted his kingdom to stretch so far that there was no end to that which he ruled. So in order to do that, he, he recognized that if I'm going to secure my kingdom in that way, I need for everyone that is under my control to worship the same that I, way that I worship. Yeah. Because if, if, if we don't worship together uh, in, in the same fashion, it tends to allow people to go against that which you believe in, yeah. which will cause them to try to break away from that which you're trying to give them. Yeah. So to do that, Nebuchadnezzar, he builds an idol made of gold, mm -hmm. 90 foot tall, about 25, 30 foot wide, this statue. Mm -hmm. And he makes a decree, and the decree is simple, and that is when you hear the sound of music, that everyone in the kingdom has to turn, stop what they're doing, and bow down, and pray, and give homage to this idol. Now, to, to, uh, to, 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 to inaugurate this event, he calls all of the, the officers in his kingdom, the princesses, the, the, uh, those in power, all of the high, what we would call the high muckety-muck kind of folk. <laughs> he called them to get together and, and as they, they, they inaugurated this great event. 
And, and when they get there, they, they, they blow the trumpets, they, 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 they play the instruments, and everyone is supposed to bow down. But there were three boys that were there. We called them boys, but they were young men, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And those three boys do not bow down. Everyone else is prostrate before the idols, but not these three boys. And there were a group of men, um, they called, the Bible calls them Chaldeans. These individuals, when they see the three boys not bowing down, they run to the king. And they tell the king, O oh, king, everyone else has obeyed your order. But these three boys, these Hebrew boys, did not bow down. Uh, just for clarity, let me give you a little background on who the Chaldeans are. These are the soothsayers. These are the same folk that in previous time the king was going to kill. But Daniel, one of the Hebrew boys, saved their lives by serving the king. Here they are, ones who have been saved by Hebrew. And now they're trying to set the Hebrews up. Let me just stop here for about 35 seconds. Uh -huh. Because oftentimes we expect those that we have helped to want to help us. But the truth of the matter is sometimes the folk that will stab you in the back the quickest are the ones that you have pulled the knife out of their back. So, so these, 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 these holders, they, they tell the king that, that, that these boys have not bowed down. Now the king, when he hears that, he, he calls them to him and he wants to verify if what has been said is true. So he confronts the three boys and he says to them, is it true that you have not followed my direct order? Because if you don't bow down, you need to understand what fate is in front of you. Yeah. And three boys say, oh king, we recognize that you have power. We recognize that you can put us into the furnace. However, we serve a God. Yeah. That if you do put us in the furnace, we serve a God that is able to deliver us. But even if he lets us burn, we still won't bow down to your God. Because if we are burned, that will mean that he has delivered us from you. When the king hears that, he gets exceedingly upset. Because him being the king, his mindset is, you should always follow my direction. Especially you Hebrews who I am dominant over. So he makes an order. And the order is that they will heat up the furnace yes. seven times hotter yes. than it ordinarily is. Yes. And we're not talking about a microwave. We're not talking about a Dutch oven. We're talking about a big oven that they have used to smoke the gold that made the statue. What is seven times hotter than normally. It was already hot enough to melt rocks and get ore out of the rocks. But the king said, I want it hotter than that. Because of his anger, he wanted to see them not just burn, but he wanted to see them singed to a crisp. So he had them bound up, put their clothes on them, put their hats on them, put their hosen on them, put their coats on them, and he has them bound up tight. They're bound up so tight that they can't even move their arms. They can't move their legs. All they can do is just stand there, wrapped up and tied up tight. And so the king then tells some of his soldiers to take them and throw them in the fire. But God always got a plan. Now when they take them up and they throw them into the fire before they can even get them over into the fire. There was a flash of a flame that came out of the furnace. 
And the flame that comes out of the furnace is so hot that it burns the guards that are throwing them into the fire. Look out, somebody. It burns the guards up, but it doesn't burn Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego up. I want you to keep that in your mind now. Now, the Bible says that they went falling down into the fire. They fell down in the fire. And they were down there for a brief period of time. And all of a sudden, they get up. And they start walking around. And the king looks and he sees them walking around. So the king turns to some of his emissaries. And he says to them, did not we throw three into the furnace? And they say, yes, king. We threw in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the king said, wait just a minute. I knew we only threw in three. But I'm looking and my eyes can't lie. I see four. And the fourth one, I don't know how the king knew what Jesus looked like. But the king said that the fourth one looks like. Good God Almighty. He looks like the son of the living God. Even the king had to acknowledge that there was a difference between my statue and the living God that has walked around in the furnace. Are y'all with me? Yes. There are three things I want to help you to understand about this situation. And I want to use as my topic what I have been told when I was in seminary not to do, which is use a question for the thing. But the question is, where is my God? Where is my God? When we think about this story, when we think about this story, we have to ask ourselves, why in the world would God allow them to go into the fire? As good a God as he is, why would he let his children, I'm not talking about hard-headed children, but these were three that had obeyed him from their youth. Why would God let good folk Go into the fire. I've asked that question myself several times when I hear about what's happening to folk in Enoch Baptist Church. And I say, Lord, I know that we have some hard-head folk in Enoch. Why are they not in the fire? But sometimes it seems like the praying for God. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it seems like the praying folk, the tithing folk. The folk that are always got a smile on their face trying to do the right thing. Dealing with the folk that's going into the fire. Lord, why? God came back and said, listen here, my brother. Here's why they go into the fire. Because I use the fire to let folk know that I am who I said I am. God will use the fire to reaffirm his sovereignty. He can do what he wants to do. Glory to God. Glory to God. Think about it. By using the fire, God burned up the gods, but didn't burn up Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Amen. By doing that, it gave no doubt to anybody that if they were to survive, it couldn't have been because the fire was not hot. You see, if the, if the gods had not got burned up, then somebody could have said the fire might have been hot, but it wasn't hot enough. But by the guards getting burned up, it left no doubt that if you survive this fire, it's got to be God on your side. See, sometimes God let us go into the fire to reaffirm how wonderful and how sovereign he is. And sometimes he'll let the fire get so hot that other folk will know that it could, if you got out of this one, come on, somebody talk back to me. For it will let other folk know if you got out of this one. I know you couldn't have got out by yourself. So if you do get out, it's only because you're gone. Have you ever considered? Have you ever considered 
that, 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 that the best testimony is not the praise report that says I got out of the fire. Huh? Have you ever considered that, 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 that if you're able to get out, that that doesn't say how necessarily how wonderful and how sovereign your God is. But here's what the best testimony is. When you're in the fire, and other folks see you in the fire, and other folks know that you need to get burnt up in the fire, because they can't see how you can survive in the fire. Oh, even though you're in the fire, you still up walking around, you still up shouting, you still up testifying, you still coming to church when they thought you should be home crying. You came to church anyway, and you were the main one lifting up your voice, saying how good your God is. See, when others can't handle the heat, that's when it shows how sovereign your God is. But I don't care how hot it gets, you still got a good testimony. Do you know that God will use the heat to take off the things that bind you? Think about what God did. Hold on now. Let's, 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 let's look back on this thing. The Bible says that when they fell into the fire, uh -huh. that they got back up and that which bound them was gone. Look at how God used the fire and directed it for his purpose. And his purpose was not to burn their clothes, not to burn their hair, not to burn their feet, but only to burn the rope that had them wrapped up. You know, sometimes God will use the fire not, 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 not to burn you, but to separate you from that stuff which got you bound. I know sometimes you wonder why, but sometimes God will use the fire just to get you away from the stuff that's keeping you bound. Because some folk ain't gonna hang around with you while you in the fire, and sometimes you need to let them out of your life. freedom from the bondage. Yes. He didn't necessarily free them from the fire. Right. He burned that off of them that kept them bound, but he still left them in the fire. And I ask myself, Lord, why? Because if that had been me, good God tonight. <laughs> if you had took the ropes off of me, I'd have been coming back out the door again. <laughs> but not no more. They stay right there in the fire. Yes. Because they realize something. That the best testimony is not when I run back out the fire. That when God set me free, I'm free in the fire. See, he wants to leave the fire. But now sometimes we need to stay in the fire. They were free in the fire. So sometimes you ain't free when you got too much coolness around you. Sometimes you are freer when you're in the heat. Because when you're in the heat, the lightweight folk. God, can I stay here for about 30 seconds? See, when you're in the heat, those lightweight folk, those leeches that was always hanging on to you, they can't handle the heat of the fire. So sometimes the fire will free you from all those leeches that had you weighted down. Now they were free. They were free to walk around. They were free to lift up their hands. Yes. They were free to shout. They were free to give God. No, they were free to reaffirm their friendship yes. and their comfortableness and their closeness with the God that they serve. Yes. My God, my God, my God. But where was God? Where was God? Yes. Here's the thing. I want you to keep it in the back of your head. Yes. Just because you don't see God. Don't mean God don't see you. Amen. Amen. So where was God though? Yes. When Nebuchadnezzar was ranting and raging. Where was God when he gave the order to bind them up? 
Where was God when they were wrapping them up so tight that they could not move? Jesus. Where was God when they threw them in the fire? What we didn't know before, now we know. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, did not I throw in three? But now I see four. And the fourth one looks like the son of the living God. Where was God while Nebuchadnezzar was on the outside, ranting and raving and acting like a fool? Where was God when they were being bound up? God was on the inside of the fire, waiting for them to come in. That's why when they got there, God was already in there. He was already waiting to put his arms around them and protect them from the heat of the flames. He was in the fire with them before they even got to the fire. Here's what we need to understand about the God that we serve. Because many Christians believe that their faith is enough to get them through. The problem is our belief is based on a false assumption about the God that we serve. See, our thing is that God is supposed to save us from going in the fire. And that God is supposed to protect us from folk messing with us. See, our thing is that God's supposed to be like a welfare clinic and give us everything that we ask him for and not give us what he wants us to have. But that's not the way God operates. So that's why sometimes that even good folk got to go into the fire because God is going to be in the fire waiting on you. Every, every patriarch in the Bible found that out to be true. That if you just let God be in control yeah. and stop trying to control God, that even though it might be burning all around you, yeah. you'll be safe even in the fire. Yeah. So where is God? The next time you're crying, God, where are you? Remember what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember that even though you can feel the heat, it don't mean that the heat going to burn you up. Remember that even if you got to go into the flames bound up, that God will use the flame to show other folk how wonderful he is. Remember that God will take and burn what that was bound you but let you free. And remember that God will be in the midst of it waiting for you when you get there. Where is God when I need him? He's always right there waiting on me. He's always willing to go there before I get there. I'm not about my God. And he'll get there before I get there. Here's what Jesus said. Greater love have no man than this. And he will lay down his life for a friend. He'll get there before I get there and be there when I need him the most. He'll make a way for me out of no way. He will show up and he will show out. And he will deliver me in the midst of my fire. And he will make sure that I am secure in the midst of what folks are putting me through. And that's why I lift him up and I praise him, not just before I go in the fire, but even when I get into the fire. I tell you all time and time again, anybody can lift him up on the outside, where it's cool and where it's calm. But these three boys give us a lesson about how to really give God some praise. Think about what they are known for. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not known for going through good times. They are known for praising God through bad times. When they had an opportunity to eat steak, they said, we'll eat beans. When they had an opportunity to be on the king's good side, they said, we don't care. We'd rather be on God's good side than be on the king's good side. Sometimes you got to position yourself. Sometimes you got to make a stand for yourself and say, for God I live and for God I die. Because I know where my help comes from. And if I got to bow down to the idol, I rather go into the fire. And if my God don't deliver me, if my God don't pull me out, here's one thing I know about my God. That my God is able to deliver me out of the fire. And I know somebody said, how do you know he's able? I know he's able because I've been in the fire before. I've seen what my God can do. I've seen how God will deliver not just me, but how he picked you up. Anybody know that God is able? Anybody got a testimony? That God is 
gets up like we've never been in the fire. I need you to understand that the same God that got you out the first time is the same God that can deliver you this time. But we gotta be like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. We gotta be able to say whether or not he will, I don't know. But here's what I do know. I know that he's able. And then you gotta be able to tell some folk, you know why? Because these folk are watching you. So you gotta be able to tell them folk that's watching you and, and hoping that you don't come out. Say, listen, he may not bring me out this time. But that don't mean he's not able to bring me out. And if he don't bring me out, I know I'm still blessed. I'm blessed because he's been keeping me all along. I'm blessed because I've been in the fight with the storm. And he had me when I was in the fight. I'm blessed right now because even though you're not for me, I know God is for me. Even though you want me to burn up, I know God still got my back. And even if I don't come out the way I want to come out, I wish I had somebody that would talk back to me. Even though I don't come out like I want to come out. I know that when I do come out, and I'm going to be better than what I'm going to be. Give them something to read. That's right. Huh? Amen. 
and from a living Bible, they need to be able to see something in me that's different than something in them. That means they gotta see me going through. They gotta see me get the heat. And they gotta see me come out victory. He's showing you his sovereignty. He's showing others his sovereignty. But notice, you're not gonna stay bound. If God does not want you bound, it doesn't matter where you are, you will be free. Some of you all in some relationships right now that you don't want to be in. And your thought process is, I'm bound. The relationship is not what's binding you. God know how to burn the burn 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 the ropes off. Yes, so even though you in there, you still can be free. Yes, you, you get what I'm saying? Thank you. Yes, Some of you all on the job and think you're bound. Thank you, thank you a lot. No, the job is not bounding you. That's right. You just gotta let God bring enough heat to burn the ropes off. Yes. Amen. Don't let the fear keep you shackled all That's down. Right. And then know this, before you got where you are, you, just because you, give me, let me hold on one second here. Give me, give me about a minute here. I don't care, but give me a minute. I want to I wanna, I wanna explain it to him, brother, brother, brother preacher. Look at here. Think about what happened. Nebuchadnezzar looked in and said, didn't I throw in three? No, the other folk looked in and only saw three. There's nothing in the Bible that says that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego saw the fourth one. All it says is what? They were walking around. <laughs> Have you ever read that it came out and said we saw Jesus in there? No, 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 no. See, just because you don't see him. For me, he ain't in there. But guess who saw him? The enemy saw him. See, you don't get it. The enemy saw him. See, you might not see that God got your back. But when you still walking around in the fire, the enemy gonna look at you in the fire and say, wait a minute. I thought I had him. I thought I had destroyed them. The enemy will see God got you. The enemy will know that he can't mess with you no more. That's why the Bible says when they came out of the fire, Nebuchadnezzar made a decree and said, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're going through. You better not say nothing bad about the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar kept right on worship idol God. But he knew at this time, you know what? I ain't gonna mess with, ain't gonna mess with their God. The enemy saw what others didn't see. You might not see him there with you. But that don't mean he don't see you. And that don't mean he won't be there before you get there. That's why you can always walk around with your head up. You can always walk around with a smile. Yes. You can always Amen. walk around knowing you have the victory. Yes, glory to God. Amen. Right. Amen. He says this. The fourth one looked like the son yes. of the living God. Yes. Amen. The fourth one. In the, in the testimony right there. Yes, yes, yes it is. It was a heathen yes, saying the fourth one looked like Jesus. Amen. Amen. We call those a pre Christophany. Mm -hmm. A pre fleshly visit of the Son of God Come to earth. Yes. Prior to Mary Jesus. and Joseph. Yes. Christ still showed up. Ah. Oh, yes. We act like he just came <laughs> when Mary and Joseph got to God. But they were the Bible. Uh -huh. The Bible says before anything was, yes. the word was already done. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. He just showed up. That's right. 
back in the fire. Way back then. To save them more. That tells us something about how powerful yeah. the Son is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's letting us know that, you know what? I'm saving you from the fire. Yeah. Amen. Anybody call it yet? Yeah. He saved me yeah. from the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the heat of you all, uh -huh. but the heat of the lake fire. Yeah. All we have to do is accept what we see. That he is there. Not that you saw it in the fire, but you saw it in the word of God. All right. So let's just say for the sake of argument, you have not acknowledged who he is in your life. Today is that time that you can do that. I know we don't have anyone that said they're visiting for the first time, but that doesn't mean that everybody is saved, and sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And we want to make sure that everybody has Christ at the center of their life. All right? So we're going to pray right now. We're going to, I think we had enough preaching for today. But we're going to pray right now. And if you're here today, if you have not received Christ as your personal Savior, when I am praying, all I want you to do is just stand up in your seat. That standing will acknowledge that you are putting the love of God inside of you and acknowledging that Christ, you believe that he is the Lord that he said he is. We want to make sure that nobody leaves here without being saved today. All right? Let's look to the Lord at this time. Our Father, our God. Master, as we come here today, we're thankful, Father, for your blessing. We're thankful for your care. We thank you for your word and thank you for showing us through your word that you are always there in our time of need. And so, Lord, right now, I pray that you will solidify your word within each of us so that we will know as we walk on this earth. Lord, that our victory has already been assured. That your angels have already been as fast as you have already positioned yourself through your son Jesus to be with us no matter what comes our way. I thank you, Lord, for each individual that's here on today. And I thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for your care. Thank you for keeping us through good times and through difficult times. And so, Master, we claim our victory today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. If there be anyone under the sound of my voice that does not know you in the pardon of their sin, we pray especially, my Savior, for that soul that's near his death, that they will receive you right now and accept that you are their Savior, that you gave your life for them. We give you all the honor and all the glory. And as we exit this building, we pray, God, that your loving care and your spirit will be with us and keep us until such time as we meet again. We ask your blessing in all these individuals and we ask your blessing on the gift of giving that they will present unto you as they exit this place. Bless, O oh God, keep right now. Grant wisdom to the officers of this church that they may do that which is acceptable in your divine sight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. God bless the saints. Listen, I hope you all had a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, I know that I did, even though we didn't have it with a lot of folk. It was still a wonderful time. Yeah. I just want to remind my Bible study group that we'll be back in business on Wednesday. We'll see you at 7 o'clock, bright, bright, bright in Bush All right. Uh, the, the ushers are uh, preparing to escort you out road by road. Uh, please be mindful of maintaining social distance as you leave. Uh, and and, and the, if, for those that you who still are giving um, uh, with envelope offerings, They'll have baskets at the exits for you. 
I think that takes care of all of our, our official stuff for today. Uh, but you welcome to shout in the aisle, in, in the parking lot, even beside your car. And just keep right on giving God the glory. Amen? Amen. Come on, God. Give us a something to your heart with. Me. My man, he needs me. My girls won't need 